Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to quickly cover some of the most important changes coming next patch and how it's actually going to impact the games. Like who is going to get much better and stuff like that. We've got some decent changes coming to every role this time around, but if you want to skip to one in particular, there'll be timestamps in the description. And if you're even lazier than that, then I got you and I'll write the changes down there as well. So AD carry to start with, first up the notorious door in the shield, the price is going up 50 gold. This thing is so overpowered that even Sven, the G2 AD carry, like one of the most aggressive AD carry players who said he didn't even ever want to use his item, ended up buying it almost every game. It's ridiculous, like you actually have to try to lose your lane when you buy this thing and it's pretty hard. All this change is going to mean though is you go into lane with one potion now instead of two. So the healing isn't quite as overpowered as it was before, but it's still really good. It's also easier to play Doran's blade versus a shield now too so you've got like the same number of potions if you play Kaelin for example you can actually buy blade and not kind of give yourself honestly though like let me put it this way okay if your laning phase sucks big time then buy a shield and you're still gonna be fine the first champion change for AD carry though is to Jin. so the bigger one is the Q damage the base damage is actually down a bit but the AD ratio is up 10% now the R change doesn't matter too much really but the Q one is really cool like buffing AD ratios on Jin is really dangerous actually when he gets so much from his passive even though you're only giving him 10% right like that's easy 60 to 100 damage in a game probably more in longer ones it's not the longest cooldown ever anyway like remember it does more damage if it kills a minion first on the way so potential wise it could really hurt there is also this new gym build though like death dance into rapid fire can infinity edge which i quite like at the moment so if you want to play some gin try that out now zaya zaya whatever w cooldown is up four seconds at all ranks so it's now going to be 16 seconds rank five i told you this was going to happen like she's not overpowered everywhere just yet but definitely at higher ranks where people have learned her a bit more she is a power house. This is going to suck for late game team fights the most. Like now up to a 16 second cooldown, right? Yes, you get some cooldown reduction, but that's still going to be a lot. It also messes with your feather system now a little bit because you were using your W in a rotation, but it's not going to kill the champion or anything. It's just weaker in big all in fights. What it really means is Jin might come back a little bit, but probably he's still going to be a bit weak still, I think. Zaya is going to be strong though, even with these. Champions like Twitch and Vayne and Jinx might not like the Doran's shield nerfs, but if anything, it means Kaelin actually, who already wanted to start with the Doran's blade is going to be stronger again that also might mean draven gets even better lucian comes back up a bit like if you can actually go aggressive earlier rather than just farm for mid game with a doran shield then these picks will be better now if we move on to the mid lane so malzahar's q damage is down a bit but his ultimate is getting a few tweaks so the target damage is down 50 rank 3 and the ap ratio is down as well now if he ultimates you and you use qss against it uh, the beam is actually not broken anymore the damage is still going to apply though but it will stop if 1250 units away which is basically like an ezreal q distance it lasts did one patch right before he was nerfed but to be honest it's not much of a surprise like i think he's the best mid you could play i don't even think this is going to make much of a difference like he's a lot stronger now in the lane phase and early mid game but these nerfs are targeting more kind of mid to late maybe that means if the game goes a bit longer it's hard of him to close it out and still be relevant damage wise right but he's still got this awesome flash engage with some extra damage behind it and he's really good in lane i don't think this is really going to mess with him too much but corky is getting uh bigger changes actually so his base ad and attack speed is up a little bit but the passive now the percentage of your basic attacks converted to magic is 75%. Really, this is an AD carry who builds AD items but deals magic damage. Now, that's kind of how you want to think of this. I'm really not sure how to feel about the changes properly because I don't think it's enough to make him really good again, but it will help out his mid to late game. I know that seems kind of weird, but an issue he had was he had 50-50 damage, right, with his auto attacks, which means late game you needed both magic and arm pen, which is basically impossible to buy both. Well, it's really not effective anyway because the arm penetration, like you're putting a lot of money into the penetration part not really the stats to come with it if that makes sense it's not that efficient in a build basically but now if it's 75 percent magic plus your ability is doing magic as well you get a void staff and you kind of be sorted i think so that might make him a bit better we also have another change to doran's ring so the passive is now unique it's only going to be four mana per unit no matter how many you have but the 60 health the 15 ap and the 50 percent base mana regen are still going to stack it's not a massive hit to a lot of different players because not many have got more than one actually but if you stack these then maybe you don't want to as much anymore it's not bad but you can't spam spells now as much now if you buy triple dorans you're really gonna feel it but i think that's mostly top laners like uh, galio and Norsus who do that so i think malzahar will be strong and corky is still pretty weak but maybe he's gonna come back a little bit more now he's actually not that bad against a lot of mid lane mages so maybe the meta is right for him speaking of the meta like it's mainly gonna be mages again i might want to watch out for karthus and heimerding a bit more though i've been watching these two the entire patch both have made decent gains in win rate and it seems to be 
be pretty strong at the moment, even if they are pretty underrated. So for the jungle, we have a few changes actually. Some pretty harsh and some pretty good as well. Zach's W damage is going to be down along with his E as well. And let's see what you guys think is the most broken thing about Zach. Because to me, it's not his damage. It's actually how he can miss his E completely, but Q you, tag a minion behind him and slam you backwards to like increase the range of his gank. It makes that gank so much longer than it already is, which is ridiculous. And it's just crazy how high a chance you have to get something from a gank. A normal jungler might go to a gank and not even blow a flash, but Zach is pretty much guaranteed to do at least that. I'm not sure about you, but I doubt this is going to make much of a difference because he's not really killing me with his damage. It's like his crowd control slamming me back into his teammate. Iron is already a lot weaker at lower ranks, I think, but this might hurt even more. You max this E first, so you're going to feel the full effect for most of the game. It's harsh because like Ivan already does pretty much no damage and now he's basically going to heal you, I guess, if he attacks you. Like he's not really going to do anything. While we're in this carry meta, though, he's actually very good at keeping them alive and it was still going to be viable at least just because of his teammates. But really, if you have a bad team, you don't want to be playing Ivan. So last time around, we had Kindred and Rek'Sai reworks, right? And both of them are getting a few buffs this patch. Both have been pretty quiet since the new patch, actually. And by quiet, I mean they've sucked ass. Kindred was sitting in the top 10, maybe top 15 win rates for jungle before the rework and now he's down to the bottom like the only champion worse is Cho'Gath these might help a little bit but let's be honest like it's going to take more than just a mana cost to bring it right from the bottom up to viable again and by the bottom I literally mean bottom 44% win rate but Rek'Sai isn't much better for her she's getting some base AD armor growth up a bit but your WAD ratio has been doubled to 80% also with your ultimate it's now more reliable so it's much harder to dodge the damage apparently now these changes are actually better for Rek'Sai I think so this should help her and she was also worse after the rework only just above kindred right at the bottom one of the biggest things was with her ultimate so like it's a lot of her damage now and it was so bad it's unreal i tried to play her and i probably sucked honestly but everybody dodged my whole damage it was ridiculous they could flash it they could dash it someone even sidestepped it without using any mobility spell like it's the dumbest thing ever i reckon if it's actually hard to dodge now she could be pretty decent because she does have a lot of damage tied into that part of the kit but we'll find out soon so zach is still gonna be pretty beast i think ivan pretty decent as well kindred will need more help than this but it might be enough for rexai to come back a little bit jarvan at least kazix in my opinion are still going to be the trinity of carry junglers that stand out apart from lee sin obviously but then he's always good we're still going to have some more late game stuff like zinzao and warwick in uh, good early game gankers like gragas and nidalee but it comes down more to playstyle overall nothing is going to change massively with the jungle meta except these specific champions are going to be getting slightly better or worse now support actually has no real champion changes but items are getting a big overhaul here which is going to change a lot the first thing is a zeke's rework which is now called zeke's convergence by the way as well which is obviously a very cool name 60 armor 30 magic resist 250 mana 10 percent cooldown reduction casting ultimate is going to summon a storm around you for 10 seconds enemies are going to be slowed and your ally that you bound to burns for 50 percent bonus magic damage over two seconds with their attacks if you attack a burning target by the way so who your ad carries attack basically your storm is going to deal 40 damage per second and also double the slow i think this is like the item that is supposed to get tank supports back into the meta a bit more now. They've been kind of forced out by like sensor redemption abusers for ages, but at least they'll have this now. For late game, this item I think is going to be insane. 50% bonus damage for an AD carry is like my white dream, honestly. It's not quite 50% actually. Because it's over two seconds and you attack more than once every two seconds, it's not quite going to be the same damage. It doesn't stack, but it's still a decent bit extra. You have kind of got to use your brain a little bit for a good ultimate and Zeke's timing and stuff, but apart from that, you basically just buff your AD for free. It's really nice and everything, but because of the redemption change overall, I actually reckon tank supports are still getting a nerf this patch. Redemption's percentage based health is down a bit. The mana regen is up, which will make a bit more sense later. The heal though is massively down, you can see, but it's three times as good with healing and shield power effects. So basically with Windspeaker's Keystone, Sensor, Crucible, stuff like that, that buffs the redemption heal more than normal, but the base is less as a trade-off. On champions who stack that stuff, it's so good for late game, like Janna, Karma, Lulu, Sona, that type gets a big buff to team fights. Thresh and Braum or like Blitzcrank stuff that who used it just like to slot a random redemption in because it was a broken item. It's a pretty big nerf to them. I'm not really sure mage supports like that needed a buff but at least it's like a nerf early game. You don't really want to rush a redemption now. You get a sensor first and then redemption afterwards and actually to be honest I've been saying that for ages. Sensor is a really good rush item so maybe this is going to be a buff overall because it forces you into a better build path but a nerf if you get redemption first. Now Athenes is also getting a rework. You can see the stat changes on screen and stuff but it's actually really interesting. It looks pretty legit for like supports and maybe some mid laners. The way the new passive works like stacking up and stuff, Athenes would give you 20 AP, Redemption 30 AP and Sensor 10 AP which already has 30 AP 
AP on it anyway. So if you stack all those items together, you're at 90 AP for one item and a very cheap item. That is a lot of AP for a support item, but that also means you do more damage. It also means you have bigger shields and heals. It seems like it fits into build pass way more now as well. Like I bet Sona and Karma, maybe even Lulu would love this item. That's also why I said the redemption base mana regen going up would make sense later. It's actually a direct buff if you buy Athenes. I wouldn't be surprised to see Athenes sensor and then redemption now, but you'll probably miss a redemption here, I guess, actually. So maybe that might stop people rushing it straight away. So this is going to mean that the Zeke's rework is actually pretty good. Like getting that Knight's Vow on a locket on a tank support will be a really good set of items to help your AD carry. On the other side, though, mage supports can get Athenes, sensor and redemption, which will also be better, especially in a team fight. I guess, honestly, both support groups got buffs, but I still think mages are better off. So my bets would be on Karma and Sona now getting in Athenes and loving life. Lulu and Janna will also like the changes quite a bit, but that does open up room for like Blitzcrank and Thresh to counter them with the Zeeks. So finally, the top lane, there's only one change here, some stuff to Rumble. There aren't many Rumble players out there, I know, but I actually think it's pretty decent and this should help as well. Better damage, slightly longer cooldowns, but an easier to use passive, which should also help bad Rumble players out there. I don't think it changes much for the top lane in general, but it is a nice change for a champion. I already think is pretty decent, actually, if you're good with him. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it, but for now, let's go to the robots.